Okay, so this is a by request video. This is the video I wasn't going to make. All y'all British fencers who love Hutton, I promise you, I was not going to make this video, but I had so many requests, including a Patreon supporter. Thank you, Patreon people. We appreciate it. I got to make the video now. So this is why friends don't let friends fence Hutton. Let's step back. Hutton was actually a pretty cool dude. Hutton was kind of Hema before Hema was there, lifelong martial artist, really thought about fencing, tried to pay attention to a whole bunch of stuff. The problem is he was a dilettante. And at least at the point where he wrote Cold Steel, it was very clear that he didn't understand what a martial arts system was. May have been the case when he submitted his bayonet manual to the army and had them throw it out for being too quote unquote theoretical. A martial arts system is a system of movements that is designed to then be expressed as a vocabulary to solve problems. What cold steel is, is a kitchen sink full of stuff that doesn't blend well together, and in many cases, doesn't understand the difference between foil and saber. They're inherently different. So, ironically, if you're a proponent of British fencing, you also, Avoid cold steel, go to the swordsman, go to other manuals. There's a lot of really good British fencing out there. Cold steel is not it. I'm gonna run through some examples real quick. All right, I am in guard of third. Cat's gonna cut two. I'm gonna duck if I have to. <laughs> our, um, our two? Yeah, you throw your two, just so you don't have to worry about system training. Let's throw a little heat. Okay, throw a lot of heat. Come in on a lunge, throw a, throw a blow. All right, you see what I'm having to do to absorb this blow. Cat is holding back because she knows I'm not in a mess, so let's fix that. All right, come in and whack me. <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> now, all of y'all out, the cool dudes at AHF and elsewhere who are saying, we fence Hutton, but we don't block like that, good. <laughs> because this is Hutton's third. Go check the manuscript. This is a foil infighting position. Pretend you've got a pokey thing and come in a little bit close while making a poke that's over this way. This is a position where I go here. We're thrust fencing. At this point, we are so close, my goal is either to make an oblique or off-angled thrust, or else to make the classic, I grapple, you stabbed maneuver. Same thing with Hutton's fourth, which is here. I'm not making it up. You can go check it out if you want. This is a bad structured parry. This is great. This is great. And you see this all over. Fifth is great. The St. George Perry, there's nothing wrong with that. It's kind of sort of similar to first, but inherently inferior because the tip is back here. Don't hurt me. I like a forward, I like a forward guard. It's a preference thing. All right, so I'm going to cut one. Actually, I'm going to cut five, and I want you to parry in four, OK? Bang! She has parried in four. She is now going to remove the top of my head, and I'm going to respond as Hutton instructs me to. Go ahead. This is high octave. This is a great idea. Cat is not acting. She has never seen this before. Oh, that's just one. That would not be gentlemanly. We wouldn't do that in gentlemanly fencing. Go ahead and do the gentlemanly version. All right, I've cut. Take it in four. Remove my head and just pull it right through. Oh, you're being nice, just whip it through. You won't bruise me much, just cut through, yeah. That's wrong, that's bad, that's terrible. Why would I do high octave? I'll explain why in a minute. Here it comes, five. Remove the top of my head. When I can just do an outside hanger, AKA seven or AKA six. Outside hangers are part of British fencing. They're well known. Hutton didn't include them. Hutton wanted it, a close-in foil parry. Da-da-da-da-da. 
it no worky for Saber. A guy who's read a bunch of British fencing and understood a bunch of British fencing with the strong, really high quality back sword tradition that exists should know this stuff. All right, you're gonna cut three at my knee. Rig R3, because it's the same numbering. This is my response. Low preem. <laughs> okay, Kat, you're grimacing. We haven't scripted any of this. Tell me what's wrong with this as a defense against cut three. Well, where do I start? <laughs> uh, give me one good example. First of all, I have your flat. Okay. Second of all. Okay, do you have a third? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm in danger of being disarmed. Roman is absolutely correct. Okay, so French fencing has an answer to these cuts. It's a very good answer. It's called septim, cut three. Oh, look, it's the same thing we do, just a different number. Why? Well, for one, she doesn't have my flat. Two, she doesn't have a stomach stab. Three, what do you got from here? Now, if we're Hungarian, smack, I've got her hand. But British fencing is French derived and the French don't use the false edge. From here, do I still have plenty of options I can go to? Yes. Yeah, I can moulinet or cut via coupe and make all kinds of stuff happen. So why would you make a fencing manual, advertised as a practical manual, where your response is low preem? This is terrible. And this is not just thrown in there as drills. You can go into the exercises and see this as a response he's training people to make. Looks great in stage combat. In fencing, it's gonna get you shanked. Speaking of the stage combat versus fencing divide, here is high second for Hutton. It's just a bog standard rod in second, right? Hutton doesn't like this because he finds it excessively tiring on the deltoids in the shoulder. Okay, cat's snickering. Why are you snickering? Because we just talked about that. Okay, we talked about that in a different video. That's true. If you find this excessively tiring on the deltoid, it means you're a newbie. This alone should disqualify the manual as, wait, he hasn't practiced this? Anybody, and I mean every single person, fighting out of second, and there are tons of them because it's a bog standard guard for Rod Ielli and Saber, as well as for a whole bunch of other material from other cultures. Here's a German version. Here's a French version. Here's a Hungarian version. They all train to connect the arm to the sternum, to the ribs, and you have increased tonus in the deltoid, but you're not using your deltoid to hold the blade up. That's first three weeks newbie stuff which leads us to the fundamental problem of cold steel. It's not a good manual for beginners. It's not practical. Hutton is throwing everything he reads about and the kitchen sink in because he wants to see more variety of play. He's unhappy with bog standard cut one, St. George's cut two, Perry of third cut five, Perry of fourth cut four, Cut three. Oh look, septim, not low preem. That just looks dangerous. I fear for my groin just standing here, okay? Hutton was a cool guy, but at this stage of his growth, he did not understand how systems work. It's very clear from the words he uses and the writing he makes that he didn't actually diligently train the material and he doesn't give you an understanding of why to preserve certain responses and reject certain others while fencing. In the exercises, he doesn't even tell you whether your riposte should be direct, by coupe, or by moulinet. And that matters. That matters a lot. You got a guy who later on came out with the swordsman, did a whole bunch of really cool stuff for the stage, lifelong learner, really sweet, but friends don't let friends fence Hutton, asterisks, cold steel. Now, I know there are folks who say, nobody's really fencing cold steel, but we have surveys that say, most people who come to Hema Sabre come to Roworth or cold steel. We're gonna present a whole bunch of other cool Hema Sabre options for those who don't care for Roworth, where you'll see 
and we're gonna call it cooler than Hutton, even though Hutton's cool, we're not actually trashing the guy. It's not everything's a quality product. I mean, look at my conditioning. Blah. All right, those of you who requested this, I'm gonna stop bloviating. Don't fence this way. And if you like the manual because it's cool, fix it. Cut six, please. Take your third out here like the single stick and back sword players do. Cut five. Take your fourth in extension. Don't give away an empty tempo trying to make a parry from here, hoping you've got it solid, and then having all this preparation for her to hit me on. We have a whole section called Don't Refuse Your Third. Go check it out. All right. This is why I have problems with cold steel. Now, everybody knows. <laughs> I'm going to go dunk my head in a bucket and see how long it is till I get canceled. Have a good one. We've got more videos and content coming, so if you liked what you saw and it was useful for you, please stab the like button, slash subscribe, and punch the little bell icon so that you're notified immediately when new content comes available. Thanks, and go do the thing. You won't believe me, but I actually soft pedaled this. I know you gotta hit the head, but throw cup six. Wow. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Mother of God. Does that hurt? Um, no, really because I knew what was about to happen and I locked my arm in and used my whole arm for a shock absorber. <laughs> It's such a great, it's such a great position to be in while fencing, right? Amazing. Yeah, so that's why I've trash talked Hutton for 30 years and become the HEMA obscurity that I am now. Oh. Largely because I don't like Hutton. Wow.